Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Rothko painting using CSS. So this tutorial is perfect for those who essentially know the fundamentals of CSS, but want to practice with a fun project. Now, if you don't know the fundamentals, don't worry, please feel free to code along anyway and fill in your blanks of knowledge later on. I do have a course called codewithanya.com where we go through everything step by step from the complete beginning, or you can check out the free Kogan curriculum from which this project was taken from. So we're going to be solving it. This is what the final project will look like by the end. And of course, you would have gained some amazing practice in CSS. So let's do it. Okay, so first off, please start on your code editor of choice. I'm using WebStorm, but please feel free to use whatever code editor you wish. Okay, I'm just gonna create a new project. As you will see, it is in a directory called WebStorm Projects, which live on my computer. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this CSS Rothko, just like that. Again, please feel free to call your project whatever you wish. So it's an empty project and I'm gonna go ahead and click create, which means I now have an empty directory or empty folder on my computer and which we're gonna put in some files. The first file we're going to add is an index HTML. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put index. Now I can press enter in WebStorm and that'll give me an HTML file, but I'm just gonna add that extension just to be sure that this extension is added because that extension is essentially what lets our code editors know to treat this as an HTML file, okay? Great. So here is the boilerplate code. As you will see, we have the doc type declaration and the HTML element. So that one here, along with two child elements. So that is one child element and that is the second one. And the head also has some children itself. So that's what we're going to do. And we've set the language to English. So please have that ready before we continue. So just a little bit of extra knowledge, char set essentially means that using UTF-8, we are able to use characters such as Arabic letters and also fun icons such as this cool snowman icon right here. That is all thanks to this declaration. And then we're also gonna have a title. Now the title is what shows up in the browser, not in the document. I'm just gonna show you Rothko painting. So that's what we're going to choose to call this document. And it just means that if we open this up in the browser, so with WebStorm, I could just go ahead and click that button and it will open this up. You will see Rothko painting show up in the tab, not anywhere in the document, right? And if we inspect this, okay, we will see the elements that make it up if you're on the elements tab. So here is our document. We've got the header with that title and then the body is where we're going to have anything that is visible essentially. So we're visible elements. So just make sure at the same place, if you're not using WebStorm, you can also open this file. So you would just copy the path, copy the absolute path to this file and just paste it in like so. And it's the same thing. Great. We are now viewing the index HTML file on the browser. Wonderful. Now within the body element, I'm just gonna add an image element. So it's a self-closing tag. I'm just gonna tab it out just because it is a child of the body. So I just wanna make that a little bit more readable for us. And I'm gonna add the source attribute. And here, I'm just gonna put a link to the image that lives on the internet. So let's minimize that. That is the full URL. Please pause here and copy it. And if you paste it, you can see what it looks like. Okay. It lives here. So you can just essentially take it and we're going to put it in our project. So let's go ahead and do that. Like I said, I've just put it here. Now save this file using command S. And now if I refresh, you will see that image show up. Okay. And in the body, there is our image with the link to that image that lives on the internet. Great. So this is quite cool because if you haven't covered the box model before, essentially it's the same as this, right? Here is the box model. Uh, we're just displaying an image of that box model here. And it shows you that each element essentially has, you know, the element itself, then a padding around it, then a border and then a margin. So I'm going to show you this uh, soon. Let's just go ahead and just change it to diagram two for now. So save this. And that is element two. It kind of tells you that the padding is around the element. 
So here is our element in blue. Each element has a padding, which is green, which we can manipulate. Then comes the border and then comes the margin. So there we go. That is the updated diagram, giving you a little bit more information about the box model. And then finally, let's have a look at diagram three. So save this, remember this. Okay, we've got the element here, which has a height and width. We've got the padding and the border. And then we also have margin as well. So hopefully that explains visually what the box model is and how each element has one. Let's move on. I'm just gonna get rid of that image element for now. So let's go ahead and add a div. So a div is, as we know, a kind of ghost of an element. It doesn't really have much, uh, okay? And we're gonna have to style it up in order to make it look like something. So to do that, I'm gonna give it a class name. I'm gonna give this the class name of canvas. And this div is essentially gonna act like the canvas to our painting. So please go ahead and do the same before we can carry on. Now, in order to pick out this element, this whole element by the class name and style it, our CSS is gonna essentially have to live somewhere and I'm gonna make it live in its separate file. So let's go ahead and create a file. We're gonna create a style sheet. I'm gonna call this styles plural.css. Again, you could have just clicked here, but I've chosen to type out the CSS extension for those who don't have WebStorm. And now our code editor knows to treat this as a CSS file. So now let's actually link up this to the index HTML and we're going to do that in the head. I'm going to use a link element to do this and thanks tab nine, we're going to have rel style sheet and as the href, we're going to put the path to the styles CSS file styles plural and as it lives in the same place as the index HTML, we could just put the file name. So now we've linked up our style sheet to here, which means that any styles that we add in here will now be applied to here. Great. Okay, so let's go ahead and now pick this whole element out by the class name of canvas. So we use dot to look for class names, so dot canvas. And now all I'm going to do is essentially set the width to this to be 500 pixels, okay? So that's what I have done. Next, I'm also going to add a height because if you save this so far, I mean, if you look in here, that does exist, but we've just added a width, no height, so we can't really see it. Let's go ahead and add a height too. I'm going to add a height of 600 pixels this time and save this. So now if we have a look in here, there is our canvas. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see the whole thing. And there we go. So as you will see, if we hover over this, it's showing up in blue. And if we look at the box model, blue is that. So there is our element. We haven't given a padding, so that doesn't exist. Nothing showing up in green. We haven't given a border and we haven't given a margin. So that is something to also keep in mind. Let's move on. I'm also going to add a background color to this element. And the background color I'm going to use is this one that has been picked out for me. Okay, so if you save that, we're using hexadecimal values. That's kind of this off uh, dark red that Rothko likes to use. So just make sure that you've added that line of code as well. Now let's work on making the frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to wrap this div with the class of canvas in another div. So to do that, I'm just going to essentially create a div like so, and I'm gonna open it up and I'm going to put this one in here. Okay, so that is now a child of this element and I'm gonna give this the class name of frame, just like so. Okay, so there we go. That is now making up our Rothko painting. Now let's pick out the class of frame so I'm just going to do that here. And this time I'm going to use the border shorthand declaration uh, and give the frame a solid black border that also has a width of 50 pixels. So that is a shorthand declaration. Okay, we could have wrote border style, border color, border width, but we didn't. We put all three things in here. So if we save that now, ta-da! we can see 
that the frame, so this right here, has a border and it's showing up. It's essentially showing up in yellow, but the black's making it look a bit more orange and it's the border, right? So the div frame has a border now. Uh, that is looking cool. We are using the box model to do this. Great. Now, if we want to set the width of the frame to be exactly the same as the canvas, we could just grab the width like so. So please go ahead and do the same in order for them to kind of, you know, align. And it just means that here they will look like that. Wonderful. Now I've decided that I want there to be a padding. So here is my frame. I want to essentially increase the space between the frame and the canvas by 50 pixels. So if this is the frame, I would use the padding in order to do that, as that is what separates the frame from the canvas, which is here. So let's go ahead and do it on the frame. I'm going to add a padding and I'm going to make it 50 pixels. So if you save that now, ta-da! Once again, here is the frame and here is the border. And if we select padding, it shows us the padding. We've applied some padding to the frame. Great. This is looking wonderful. Now I'm also going to apply a margin to the frame. I'm going to do this of 20 pixels. Okay. So I'm going to say 20 pixels and that's going to be applied to the top, left, bottom, and right. And if I just want to apply this to the top and bottom and then auto from the left and right, that is how I would do it. Okay. This will apply to the top and bottom and this to the left and right. It's essentially a shorthand of me writing this. So top, right, bottom, left. Okay. So once again, we're just going from here, top, right, bottom, left. And a shorthand of doing that is this. So that just means that if I now refresh, ta-da, 20, like I said, down to the top and bottom, and on the left and right, that's auto. That has been automatically assigned so that this will always be in the middle of the document. You will see those numbers changing there too, okay? That's what auto will do. Great. Now I'm gonna add another element, this time inside the div of the class of canvas. And I'm gonna give this the class name of one. And this is gonna be our first rectangle. So once again, this is a child of the div of the class of canvas. So please go ahead and add that in there. And next we're going to essentially make it look like more of a piece of art. So once again, let's pick this out. I'm gonna use dot notation one. In fact, we should probably get rid of that now. And I'm gonna set the width of this to be 425 pixels like so. Let's also set the height of this. I'm gonna go the height 150 pixels. And let's also set the background color. So the background color is gonna be EF B762. Again, one that has been pre-picked out for us. So at the moment, our painting will look like this. Uh, I'm also now going to use the margin shorthand property in order to vertically add a margin of 20 pixels to the top and bottom and auto from the left and right, which just means that now this should show up in the middle, which it does. So please go ahead and do the same. Now, for those of you who are eagle-eyed, you might have noticed that we added 20 pixels to the top and bottom. However, it looks like this div is pushed at the top, okay? This is because this element's margin is pushing past the element with the class of canvas onto the frame's border and shifting the entire canvas down 20 pixels. So as you will see, this is bigger than that. This is not something we want to do. In order to get rid of this, I'm gonna add a padding of one pixel to the element with the class name of canvas so that this element right here has something solid to push off. So add the same. And if we now look in here, there we go. So that is looking better. As you will see, that is now pushing off and is fitting nicely in the element with the class name of canvas. Great. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller, even further. 
Now, by adding that one pixel, it's actually changed the canvas uh, dimensions. So let's go ahead and select that canvas. You will see here that the dimensions of this are now 502 pixels by 602 pixels. In order to remove that, I'm going to replace the padding to actually be overflow hidden instead. So overflow hidden, just like so, and there we go. So that is a much better fix than adding the padding of one pixel. Okay, great. Let's go back and add another div, this time just below the one with the class name of one, and I'm gonna give it the class name of two. This is going to be essentially our second rectangle that's going to make up our painting as, you know, Rothko is well known for his rectangles in their paintings. And once again, let's just go ahead and pick that out. So dot for class name, and I'm going to give this a width of 475 pixels. So just like that. The height of this, I'm going to set to 200 pixels. And let's also go ahead and set a background color. Now this background color, I'm going to make it be 8F0401. Uh, okay, so save that. And this is what it should look like at the moment. So let's carry on. Next, I'm just going to use margin, but I'm going to do margin auto all around this time. Okay, so this is what it should look like at the moment. And now let's do a third element. So once again, I'm just going to paste that in here, change it to be three, and let's pick it out once more. So dot three, and let's get to styling it up. Now, we don't always have to use pixels, we can use percentages, for example. So I'm going to set the percentage of this to be 91%, and a height of this to be 28%, just like so. Let's go ahead and change the background color too. So I'm going to do B20403. Save this. And essentially, this is now what it should look like. And finally, again, let's just do margin auto. And ta-da! This is looking so good. Now, it's helpful to always have your margins push in one direction. In this case, the bottom margin of one element pushes this one down by 20 pixels. We also want to do that to the second element. At the moment, it's got margin auto, as you can see here, margin auto, but we want to essentially apply 20 pixels to the top and bottom. So let's go ahead and use the shorthand for this. So I'm just going to use 20 pixels in front of this, like so, in order to do that. Okay, so that will make it for the top and bottom. And if we just want to do it to the bottom, well, we know how to do this. So once again, zero from the top, auto from the right, 20 pixels in the bottom, and auto to the left. Okay, so now just a 20 pixel border will be applied to the bottom of this element right here. As you can see here, there's a margin. Okay, this is looking great. Next, I'm going to actually blur this a little bit, just so it looks a little bit more like a Rothko painting. And for this, we're gonna use the filter property. So let's go ahead and do that on the canvas element right here. I'm gonna use the filter property, and then we're going to use blur method in order to blur the painting by two pixels. So if we go ahead and do that, Ta-da! That is looking much more like a Rothko painting. I'm pretty pleased with that. Let's just create a rule that will target the first and second elements in height inside here, so these two, uh, and increase the blur effect by one pixel. So to do that, I'm going to grab the element with the class name of one and the element with the class name of two. So that comma separates them, but we're essentially looking for this one and this one. So we can apply this rule and I'm going to use filter blur and I'm just going to add one pixel to it. So on top of what it's getting from the canvas, these two are going to have one extra pixel of blur. Okay, so that it looks like that. Wonderful. Now let's also increase the blur of this. So once again, I'm going to use 
filter blur uh, and let's increase it by two pixels. So there we go. Just add that to the code that you see here in order just to apply that to this element. Another thing we can do is actually uh, add some softer edges to the rectangles themselves. And we're gonna do that with the box shadow property. So let's go ahead and do it on this one first. I'm gonna use the box shadow property and I'm gonna say that X axis, I want it to be zero. Y axis, I want it to be zero shadow. Three pixels blur and then three pixels spread. And the color for this is gonna be E, that one right there, that's right. So this just means that it's gonna be a little bit softer. We just added a box shadow around this and increased the size of that rectangle visually. Let's add the same box shadow to two. However, I'm just gonna change the color of it to be the same as the background color and do the same for three as well, but change the background to match the background color of three. Okay, and I'm just gonna make this a little bit more blurred and a little bit more spread. And there we go. Now I'm just gonna add some border radius as well to round off the edges. So I'm gonna use border radius and I'm gonna make this nine pixels. And if you save this and look in here, you will see that is rounded off on the first rectangle. Let's do the same on the second one. However, this time I'm going to use the shorthand in order to add a top left radius and a bottom right radius of eight pixels. So eight pixels, and then it's gonna go 10 pixels for the top right, eight pixels for the bottom right, and 10 pixels from the bottom left. So it's a kind of off rectangle if you wish, okay? So it should look like that. Wonderful. And for the last one, I'm gonna do box border radius and the top left corner of this is gonna be 30 pixels. And then the top right, I'm gonna do 25 pixels, bottom right, 60 pixels, and bottom left is gonna be 12 pixels. Great. So there we go. And I'm just gonna make this look a little bit more imperfect by rotating each one very slightly using the transform. Okay, so I'm gonna use transform and I'm gonna use the rotate method in order to pass through 0 0.6 degrees. And I'm gonna make it go anti-clockwise. Okay, so it's very, very slight but as you can see, it's looking a little bit more imperfect. For two, I'm gonna pass through 0 0.4 degrees, just like so. And for three, I'm gonna pass through 0 0.2 degrees, making sure that again, it is anti-clockwise. So now there we go, we have done it. We have completed our Rothko painting. I hope you're happy with it. I've learned, I hope that you've learned a little bit more about the box model, as well as some cool methods such as rotate, as well as blur. Uh, I think this looks pretty cool. Let me know what you think below, and I hope to see you again in the next lessons.